do you know that as I sit here and I am in my own little world, I didn't know what I should do today. I didn't know if I should go fuck with the court. I got tired of the online game real quick. I hate this shelter because remember now I had a three bedroom house that I paid $342 a month for. I paid $572 a month for. That was the most that I paid for my three bedroom house monthly. $572, one third of my fucking income that they could count. And I could be at home cutting my grass. I could be at home minding my business. If that bitch from that holiday down there off of Washington just drove past me like she was taunting me in an Impala, I think of the transportation game. I think about that woman who said, you know how them Chicago men are. And I thought, well, I knew Chicago men from the TV, right? And the TV made me think that they were all murderers and rapists, that they were gangbangers and killers, that when I went to the doctors in Minnesota, that none of them were doctors, none of them were therapists, none of them were dentists. I didn't meet any, you know, judges that said that I'm from Chicago, so I didn't have a real good reference of Chicago men. When uh, Donna Dent said that she remembered Cook County Hospital recently, within the last year, when I seen Donna Dent, and I'm thinking, you was at Cook County Hospital? Ain't that out of Chicago? Didn't you grow up in Minnesota? Like, did you go to Cook County Hospital when your mom went and visited home? Because, see, I don't remember Cook County Hospital. And when I think of some places where, for me, um, it was all black. And I hate to say that. I really hate to say that. But then I had negative vibes when I think of things being all black sometimes because we for me um, didn't have a lot of money Oprah wasn't investing like white people Oprah so then therefore our facilities supports and services wasn't like theirs Oprah and because a lot of times Oprah I didn't see black people wanting to take the time to study learn what people wrote down in books didn't matter whose color it was. Because see, when you're learning about the body, we now get to learn what that white man did to get the information. But what's more important, the information he got from the brain experiment or, you know, the white man that did the brain experiment. Had it not been done, we wouldn't have the brain mapping that we have. So, unfortunately... It happened, and it happened in the manner that it did. Uh, so as the world was created for me in the United States, black people was always the study subject, always, because we were slaves and it was easy to use us as study subjects. So as man started to create what we now know as, you know, the world, um, that's how we got the brain mapping we got and the education you get from learning about the brain where that man terrorized some black person is it's for us anyways in the United States it's uh, it's detrimental to the body because the brain functions with the body and the body can't function without the brain. Once the brain shuts down, the body I thought was dead, just like the heart. So when you study the heart, you can learn about the man that abused a person to learn about the heart. But the studies that you got about the heart in and of itself and how the heart is in everybody, um, that's, you know, again, detrimental to being a good heart doctor for me. And it's not about the color of the person that got the heart information. But it's going to be about the person that's doing the heart surgery on you. And how skilled they are. You know, so I want them to be very educated, right? Very fucking educated. I sure do. Because when you cut my head open now today, when you open up my heart today, I want to make sure that you're skilled at what you do. And it's a blessing that we have the tools that we have, right, Oprah? 
in the environments that we get to use them in. Because if we cut somebody's fucking heart and head open in an unsterilized environment where, again, dirt could get in there, they're liable to get an infection from the surrounding area and the utensils and how we, again, you know, sterilize this stuff. It's going to matter. So for me, living in America, watching how we've progressed, you know, that's been a blessing. I, I just, I mean, I've never heard of anybody being flown to Switzerland. I don't even know if they could survive the flight to Switzerland as they got some of Switzerland's care, whether or not they could or couldn't afford it. The question is, can they survive the flight there, right? So, you know, it is what it is to be born in America and then seek the best. So if you're telling me the best is in Switzerland and I have to fly to Switzerland, we're all getting poor care at this point, right? Because there ain't nobody fucking flying to Switzerland that we know of to get cared for. We know of. We, me. I don't know anybody going to Switzerland, you know, to get a heart surgery. You know, aneurysm dealt with. I'm just not knowing that. So when I think of Bobby today, Bobby be very clear. If you are assembling a Democrat party and your Democrat party in the state of Minnesota has targeted me, I claimed it was a hate crime. I said as a hater, you know, that woman at the holiday, I told her, I said, you know, as this holiday is being built because it was burnt down during the riots this particular holiday and as this honeybee is turning in a holiday and it's being rebuilt I thought that I was guided there one day as a STEM student in because the car was getting ready to run out of gas and it was like two three o'clock in the morning I'm looking for a gas station and as I'm looking for a gas station because the car is going to run out of gas because I'm trying to be warm I thought that holiday was open and as I was about to go in there and they were having a party I realized it wasn't open but they had a lot of cars Cars there that had a party going on inside and it wasn't fucking open. That holiday scared me at that point because of the honeybee and the activity that was going on at that holiday prior to it becoming a holiday. So with that being said, I had bad vibes about that uh, business. And then she became a part of the bad vibe. A couple times she, she did some things like I was in line behind a person and then they had all these dog products, right? And then she said some shit like, yeah, I give free products to people I like for their dogs. And then she looked at me and gave me a bad vibe. Why? Because I felt like she was saying she didn't like me and Rex, so she wasn't giving us no free treats. And then I gave up Rex. And then I thought that bitch said to me, you want a free dog treat? And I didn't even have Rex at that point, so it was like a stick in my back or a knife in my back, Michaela. So as this bitch at the holiday, you know, goaded me, I thought, now that I don't have Rex. And she made the comment about how, you know, me and Rex was in line. And she gave treats to the people she liked, but she didn't give them to me and Rex that day. And then she gave me a treat way after that. After, by the way. I didn't have Rex. I felt a type of way. So then I made the comment when I was working. I said she used to wear clown makeup. She used to make her eyeshadow like in uh, quadrants of four. And she would do like checkerboards. Like right. It would be like a blue and white checkerboard on her eyeshadow. And it would bother me. So I didn't like her eyeshadow. And then they made her change her makeup. And then now she had these fingernails. And the fingernails look like they could be an inch, inch and a half long, two inches. And I said that under the law, Judge uh, Robiner, I would charge a woman with uh, assault if she had them fingernails and got in a fight. Especially if she had them fingernails and got in a fight before she got the fingernails. If she had a record of being domestically violent or at bar fights or uh, was known to be fighting people and not being charged with it because somebody's saying she's always fighting and nobody ever calls the police. I called the police and so now I'm charging her with this and then she's got these fingernails. I would think that she knew them fingernails could be a weapon and I would charge her with having a weapon on her hands based on the pointiness and the uh, length of the fingernails because if you stab somebody wrong with them in the throat, in the eye, you can really damage them for life. So I thought those fingernails should be um, considered dangerous weapons and should be banned 
you know, from the nail shops and even putting them on people's fucking fingers. White people weren't really running around with them thinking of only people in the ghetto, the hood was the neighborhood, as I called it. So as she had them fingernails now, I told the security guard, by the way, I thought those fingernails, like I said, were considered weapons. She should not be able to work with them fingernails at any job because they look like weapons. And if I was her manager, I would fire her if she continued to have this type of behavior. The makeup of nails is doing too much, right? There's a look that we want you to have, um, which is open and inviting. And you're not really open and inviting. You're kind of intimidating and scaring people. So it would seem like to me, as our manager, I would give her another warning. And then I would be looking at her job. And that's when she wanted me trespassed from the holiday. So that MIB man that, you know, walked out, said he wasn't trespassing me then. And he walked out the holiday and went and sat in his car. And then I seen him at, I thought, Royal Tobacco, and he stiff-armed me, that men in black guy, you know, uh, Linnell Carruthers, as I think about the stripper from Augie's working at Holiday, and you keeping the hood under control, that's why I be coming at you, sir. You know, because again, I thought that was that, you know, uh, men in black uh, mm. abuse of the hood, and specific to women like me, you know, in case she had a car. Because remember now, under welfare reform, I was grandfathered in, which meant that I didn't have to be under the five-year contract of being under welfare reform. In a year and a half, Sue Parr, I got a job. I worked at Rainbows. So a year and a half after Shayla was born and half of Michael's life, I was working at Rainbow. Uh, up until that car accident, you know, because I worked at Rainbows, I did ING, I did um, risk management, I did motherfucking uh, door-to-door sales. I mean, I was doing a lot at that time, you know, trying to make a name for myself and find a job that not only paid me good money, but also good benefits, Linnell Carruthers. So again, if you're mocking me in any way, shape, or form, if you and uh, your regime, as I call them, Sue Bobby Joe Champion, Keith Ellison, want to keep targeting me, I'm going to keep targeting you, sir. Really. Is your, is your daughter strippers? Because I said we now needed to put driving in um, Minneapolis public schools because people retire from driving jobs. And as they retire from driving jobs, learning the book and the CDLs and things that go with it, I thought could be taught in a school environment. And then under the school ideology, a child could get that. And then from high school, they got a job with a career. So then stripping, you know, if it's a job and a career, should also be in health class. Because as a woman, you know, you could be a housewife, get a husband, or you could get a fucking job. And in order to get a job, you should have to get an education. And the more education you have, the more money you should make at your job. Just because, you know, Keith said you should get $15 don't mean everybody needs $15. Because, again, when I was making $5 an hour, wasn't nobody screaming $15 for me at Clark's gas station. I'm just saying. 